Hi, my name is Glenn Hasselman. I'm just making this video for the free accounting software users to show you guys how to um, process a super contribution using free accounting software. So I've set up this organization and I've just done this as a um, locally stored desktop file. Super contribution is pretty much the same in a, uh, or is the same in the locally stored file for, as well as the um, Vassoff hosted file. Um, the only difference is that when you're using Vassoff at the end, you, uh, you'll be able to record the payment of that super um, and reconcile the super payable account. In the desktop file, there is no balance sheet, so it's not relevant. Anyway, I'll show that bit of the process at the end. Um, but for now, we'll just do a normal super contribution. I've set up a um, employee and a super fund here, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so some of the details here are relevant, obviously the name. Um, some of these contact details, I think they get used in the super contribution file that you can generate. I should say that you don't have to generate the file, you can just, and I'll, I'll show a bit more of that later. Um, so you can just enter some minimal information and generate the, the amounts and use that. Um, so uh, anyway, payroll details, I've just entered some basic things. You, you probably have your job title and award and that kind of stuff entered there as well. Um, and the employee super fund, member number, Obviously, that's used and the um, actual super fund, and I'll show the setup of the super fund in a moment. TFN declaration is relevant, and the TFN number is um, used as an identifier for the contribution to super. And um, uh, back, back when SuperStream came in, um, the TFN, there was some legislation that passed it. Um, made it possible for super funds to use the TFN as the identifier. So, uh, that's there. Um, the employee name is relevant and the employee address gets picked up from here. So it's not the address on the first page of the employee setup, it's this one. I think the date of birth is, yeah, the date of birth is obviously used in this contribution as well. You probably have all these, all this information set up for your single touch payroll lodgements. Um, but it's it's useful to know where it's uh, getting this information for on the contribution. So I'll just have a look at the super fund. So the super fund is set up with the uh, name, ABN and address and, and this is all used. Perhaps it, the email address or something there might be used as well, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, uh, t for a super fund you um, fill in this link here it says this is a super fund dash edit so by filling in this information that's what makes the um, uh, counterparty a super fund uh, this is just an example um, uh, USI um, well it's not a r real one I don't think but um, find out the real uh, unique super product identifier and um, put that in there um, might also need to put an electronic service address and the employer identifier. Particularly for a self-managed super fund, you might need to put the um, uh, payment instructions here as well. Now, um, you know, I sometimes just leave all this out and just put in the USI, and I gen use the software to generate the amount, and then I'll um, type that amount into the ATO Small Business Clearinghouse rather than generate the full file but anyway that you'll need just at least the superannuation product identifier in there to to do this okay so that's the setup I've already paid the employee um, something in the July month so we'll generate the super contribution for that month okay so it's defaulting to the July to September quarter um, you can you can generate these super contributions on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis uh, if you're doing the July to um, September quarter, that would be due on 28th of October. Um, so put the actual payment date, well, the actual payment date, not the one it's due on. Um, and then um, click Generate New Super Contribution. Okay, it's generated uh, an amount there for the uh, employee. It'll actually list all your employees and put a total for each super fund. In this case, I've just got one employee. 
you can click on the F and click PDF current page and um, save the PDF Yep, so uh, that's what it looks like and you can just take that report and use that to type it into the Small Business Clearinghouse or Superfund website. However, what you can also do is use the software to generate a file that can be uploaded to the Superfunds uh, rather than typing it in. Um, if you double click on the um, employee, you can see there's a lot more information. Um, like, um, yeah, the, the, the address, email, if, even if they've ended employment and the end reason. Um, that's not recorded elsewhere in the software. So if you wanted to use this file to communicate that information to the super fund, you'll actually have to um, select the uh, value there and save this. Um, the pay period that it relates to and there's the amounts. You can um, edit the amounts here but you really shouldn't. You should um, um, get uh, presses the payroll correctly so that it will automatically generate all of these amounts. I've got a video on um, how to process uh, additional employer super um, so that shows you how to do this one and you can probably easily work out uh, the other ones like employee voluntary and uh, other third party contributions from that video as well. Okay, um, back to the list of employees and then you can go to this lodge page. On this lodge page it, it's generated a whole bunch of other information. Um, I didn't fill in a bank account on the um, business setup but that would be in there if I did. Um, and you can give the file a reference okay before there's a note down the bottom here before you click save lodge file you need to save the super contributions let's do that and then once you've done that um, you can click save lodge file um, this is a CSV file type i um, not sure why it didn't automatically add the .csv, but I'd suggest you put this .csv on the end. And quick look at the file, though it's not really something you would edit. Looks like this. Um, and it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it incredible amount of information really um, but once you set up the employees you can um, it would save you from manually typing this information into the um, to the super fund okay so um, well that's pretty much all there is to um, lodging your um, super contribution I guess um, not sure what else I can tell you but yeah you can you can regenerate this the super um, for the month if you found something was wrong with it um, this one has status lodge complete if I try to edit a transaction and change super on it it's going to error uh, but in fact if you Want, you can click unlodge this super contribution um, to change it back to created status and fix it up um, yeah or you can just delete it and then um, redo it okay um, the next thing I was going to show you is if you are using um, Vassoff hosted file how to record the payment of this super contribution so let's go and do that so I was in this file super demo uh, which is a type blank which is a local file I've got another one set up here which is a Vassoff 
cloud hosted file so I'll just go into that one and um, if we look in the balance sheet um, there's a bunch of other things but there's also this um, um, employee super compulsory contributions which has got the um, credit of 467 which is that um, super so to pay this super we um, just have a look at the tax codes um, we've got employer super compulsory and that's um, tax rate should be 100% so uh, when we're dealing with super when we're making this payment it's all, ta all tax in fact it's not a, considered a tax but taxes in uh, free game software is a little bit more broader than of a concept more like it's a provision for super um, so to pay the super we go to the cash worksheet new cash transaction um, we paid it on the 28th of October so uh, we put the super fund because we're paying it to the super fund um, if you're paying the small business clearing house you might put that um, uh, counterparty in there payment of 2020 super um, I've got this screen shrunk down quite a lot so that the text will display correctly or large enough that you can see it on the video so it's a bit crammed over here but anyway I'll just work with that um, the account is um, super employee compulsory and the tax code which is defaulted to is employer super compulsory and the tax amount is 467.40 so tax amount is equal to the amount and then save that oh, hang on um, bit of a trap it's got to be a cash payment not a cash received okay um, then when we go to the balance sheet and uh, go to uh, um, super contributions it still says 467 and that's because the date I'm actually recording this video on the 5th of August but I put the payment date in October so we have to go forward a few months there okay and that's zero we go in there we can see that there is a uh, positive or a negative amount being the credit payable super and the um, payment of the super um, so that's zero the account but what's going to happen is obviously all this stuff is going to build up you're going to get a lot of um, transactions in this account and it could become confusing as to what's actually outstanding so you should reconcile this so select the um, first transaction in fact this is just one pay slip if there was more pay slips they'd all be listed and you might have to select all the pay slips in the September quarter uh, and then select the payment of that down here in the total it says total select tax amount is zero um, so that means that the the negative amounts offset positive amounts which is what you'd want to see and if that's the case then you can click this button that says reconcile selected transactions once you do that um, this uh, is actually normally hidden by default but it, it's displaying because I've got two months of history there if I change this to just outstanding months just outstanding amounts and uh, update that it won't be displayed so the idea is that when you go into this account you see what's outstanding so it's super payable it's a super payable account and you see what super is payable which is logical um, if you do want to see history you can um, you know click to see one month of history as well as what's outstanding um, or you can go to nothing outstanding if you go back to say 30 september and update it you'll see that 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 payment was outstanding as at that time uh, 
and that's uh, so that's a good practice to reconcile um, your superannuation account regularly so you're keeping tabs on what hasn't been paid all right well um, I think that's everything you need to know about um, um, recording the superannuation pay payment in free accounting software um, I hope this um, video has been useful to you and thanks for watching